Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'ala habita fillah Continue on in our reading of <coughs> the excellent matters, uh, excellent manners of seeking forgiveness and we're all in need of forgiveness of Allah Azza wa Jalla may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our fasting and our standing in prayer and our seeking forgiveness from Him, Tabarak wa Ta'ala. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purify our souls. Ameen. So continue on. Our Shaykh, Shaykh Abdul Razak, he said, regarding purifying, or regarding uh, seeking uh, forgiveness and the manners of seeking forgiveness, he said, so from Shaddad ibn Aus, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he said, the noblest and most excellent manner of seeking forgiveness is that the servant says. So he listened to this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and this is from the levd of the hadith, and this is really the the topic of the Sheikh's lecture. And he, again, <coughs> the hadith of Shadad bin Aus, uh, Ibn Aus, uh, radiyallahu taala, from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that he said the noblest. And most excellent manner of seeking forgiveness is that the servant says, Allahumma anta rabbi, la ilaha ila ant, khalaktani wa ana abduka, wa ana ala ahdika wa wa'dika <coughs> mistata'atu, a'udhu bika min sharri ma sana'atu, wa abu'u lak bi ni'matika alayhi, وَأَبُوءُ بِذِنْبِ فَغْفِرْ لِي فَإِنَّهُ لَا يَغْفِرُ ذُرُوبِ إِلَّا أَنْتِ O Allah, you my Lord, none has the right to be worshipped except you. You created me, and I am your slave or faithful worshipper. And I am faithful to my covenant and my promise as far as I am able. I seek your refuge from the evil of what I've done. I acknowledge before you all the favors that you have bestowed upon me and I confess all my sins to you so forgive me since none can forgive sins except you. And this is a hadith in <coughs> this dua and this hadith can be found in Bukhari. And there are so many fu'a and ahabit from this hadith of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam in this hadith, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, it, <clears throat> it is a supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which really is a strong affirmation of Tawheed. That the servant is bearing their soul before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opening his or her heart before the one who created them, who knows them, and who knows what they have done and what they will do. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And by humbling oneself and supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, O oh Allah, you are my Lord. <clears throat> None has the right to be worshipped except you. Here, is an affirmation of Tawheed. <coughs> Tawheed al uluhiya wa rububiyya By affirming that none has a right to be worshipped except Allah alone. And this is an act of ibadah. This is an act of worship. You are declaring that your worship goes to none except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And affirming that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al khaliq you created me, and I am your servant. And I am faithful to my covenant and my promise as far as I'm able. So here, in this part of the dua, is a ishara or a, a uh, uh, an indication that the slave is humbling his or herself and showing that they, they, they acknowledge that they are weak. We're weak. We're weak with regards to our sins. We're weak with regards to our duties. And what is mithlub, what is uh, an obligation upon us, 
is for us to strive to fulfill our duties to the best uh, of our ability. And in this regard, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kitab al Kareem, Fataqullah bistata'atum. And fear Allah as much as you can. And then the dua, I seek your refuge. I, you know, I seek refuge in you from the evil of what I've done. <laughs> Here the servant before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is seeking refuge in Allah tabarak wa ta'ala from the evil of his or herself. Because we all contain, we all have evil and good within us. And we all commit sins. The Prophet said, Kullu ibn Adam khata wa khayna khata'ina tawabun. All the children of Adam commit sins, and the best of those who sin are those who repent. Let us know we all sin, and we all must repent. It's wajib. And that the best of us is those who sin and repent. And then there's the acknowledgement of those sins. I acknowledge before you all the favors that you have bestowed upon me. There's the acknowledgement that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our razak. He's the provider. He's the sustainer. He gives you everything you need. And I confess all my sins to you. This is ibadah. That you are confessing your sins, exposing yourself to your Lord who already sees everything and knows everything that you do. And this is the difference between Ahle Iman and Ahle Shirk. Whereas Ahle Shirk, they will confess their sins to a priest or the Imam. Oh, Imam, I've sinned. Please, you know. Or those who uh, seek refuge in the dead or in their wali, you know, from the saints and pious ones. Oh, saint so-and-so. Oh, Imam so-and-so. Oh, Sheikh so-and-so. I've sinned. Please forgive me and and, or, you know, carry my forgiveness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they seek a wasila, they seek shafa'a, they seek um, uh, a means, and they seek a, a intercession from the creation, when instead they can have that direct relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's the beauty of Islam, and what is, how Islam it distinguishes itself from a lot of these other uh, faiths, is that they tawakkala al insan, they rely upon put their trust in men and jinn and the shaitan and other than that. Whereas the Muslim puts their faith and their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they confess their sins to Allah. Okay. And then the last, after the saying, I confess all my sins to you, so forgive me since none can forgive sins except you. And that's the acknowledgement that Allah is the only one who can forgive you from your sins. People can forgive you for mistakes you made towards him if, and it included a sin. They can forgive you if you stole some money, if you hurt them, you hurt their feelings, whatever the case may be. They can forgive you. They can pardon you. But the true pardoning, the true forgiveness that's going to remove the sin comes from Allah Azza wa Jalla. <laughs> the Prophet Sallallahu said Whoever says it in the day Meaning this supplication we just mentioned With firm conviction in it And dies in that day before evening Then he is from the people of paradise Whoever says it in the night With firm conviction in it And he dies before the morning Then he is from the people of paradise Very important Say this supplication in the day and in the night. So this is a supplication we have to spend time and, and learn and memorize. Now we have an idea, a general idea about the meeting. And it's very important for our practice. The scholars count this hadith as one of the narrations both for the night and for the day. One of the dhikrs that should be said in early morning between dawn and sunrise and at the start of the evening. 
Whoever says it and dies in that day before evening will enter paradise. Similarly, whoever says it at night and then dies before morning will enter paradise. Paradise is guaranteed for him. And this, why? Because the Sadiq al Masduk said it. The Prophet said it. This tremendous hadith of Shadad ibn Aws was reported by Al Bukhari in his Sahih in the book of supplications under the ch title, chapter, The Most Excellent Manner of Seeking Forgiveness. He also quotes it in a second place in the same book under the title, chapter, What to Say When One Gets Up in the Early Morning. This shows that Imam al Bukhari ta holds that. In the saying of the Prophet wasallam, the most excellent manner of seeking forgiveness to the end of the hadith. There is proof that this is indeed the best wording for seeking forgiveness and the wording that is most complete. So Allah, we have to learn this dua. There's just no if, ends, or buts about it. We've got to take time and learn this dua. And we'll do that in a second, in a, a separate video. We'll sit down and I'll make sure that the video, the, the, the supplication is there in Arabic and English and we'll we'll learn it and we'll go over the meaning again and we'll look at a sharh from one of the ulama maybe bin of Amin, or maybe one of the ulama of the past Imam Anawawi or one of the great imams of the past then the sheikh said when we study and reflect upon these words and what they contain with regard to all aspects of supplication, humble submission, humility, one's abject poverty and need before Allah, acknowledgement of his favor and blessings, and the fact that none forgives sins except him, when we consider this, then it becomes clear to us that the wording of this hadith is very great and that it indeed deserves its description by the Prophet والسلام, as the noblest, most excellent manner of seeking forgiveness. So that shows us Habitifillah. And our Sheikh Abdul Razak explained it bil, bil, bil in a very concise and summarized manner those fantastic fawa'id and benefits we gained from that hadith. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us with ilm al-nafi rizqin tayyibu amil al-muntaqabbina wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.